You're using God as a guilt trip to tell people what they should be doing instead of addressing the very real differences by living in the world that we currently live in. My friends, welcome to the Sheep Get Sheared podcast. I'm your host, Austin Creed. My friends, we're going to talk today about using God as a guilt trip. I've touched on this topic before, so if you haven't seen me talk about this, I'd recommend you go. You don't have to. You can do whatever the hell you want. But just to help you provide context, I'll, I've will i done topics on this before, but I'll sum up, summarize everything briefly. When we look at the modern world, we look at the law, we look at the culture, we look at statistics and we see how the marriages are playing out. When you go into the church today, a lot of churches still push marriage. They still push this and I don't think they do it necessarily to be insidious. At least I would sure like to believe that they don't because as soon as that falls for me, we're in really big trouble. But I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. And even amongst people that I respect in my life who I respectfully disagree with on this topic, we still have interesting discussions, but unfortunately all too often, they devolve to real men do X or what you should do is Y or the Bible says Z. And while that's all well and good, the problem is I when you have the left, whether it be the radical feminists, the communists, the socialists, whatever, and then on the other side, you have the quote unquote trad cons, the traditional you know, family value conservatives all convulging on the middle, which is the manosphere, the red pill, whatever you want to call it. When you have both sides converging in on the same quote community or just people who subscribe to their philosophy or their own brand, their own branch of this offshoot of the trunk, we have to ask ourselves, are people using God just like they use shaming language on the left? We know the feminists, how they operate. The oh, real men will marry, you know, boss babes and men should just accept women, listen to women, blah, 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 blah. And then on the right hand side of everything, we have the people saying, hey, you know what? We just want people to say, hey, just take that out. I mean, at the end of the day, the Bible says do it. So you should just do it, right? That's what people say. They say, Oh, well, because the Bible was written 2,000 years ago, and in the Roman culture of that time, or the Jewish culture of that time, they all got married, they didn't have sex before marriage, all that kind of stuff. You should just do the same thing now. And I said to them, wait a minute, hold on a second. You're not giving proper context. You are not providing a full picture to that. And in doing so, you're being disingenuous. You're using God as a guilt trip to tell people what they should be doing instead of addressing the very real differences by living in the world that we currently live in, as compared to the world that they lived in at that time. But people don't want to have that conversation. For example, I brought this up multiple times in the past, but when you look at the ancient Jewish culture in the Old Testament, which is where the New Testament comes from, you look and you see that Modern traditions like the bar mitzvah for boys and the bat mitzvah for women was a coming of age. And that happens during the teenage years. That, that happens at a very young age by today's standards. They would then be given into marriage very soon then after to be given a stake in the community, a way for them to have a somewhat acceptable, morally good orgasm so that they didn't have to go out here and fight temptation on the front lines every every day in every way. But the problem is, in our current culture, when people are living longer, people are have more access to, quote, freedom, and through freedom, they destroy tradition, by the way. You know, and part of this experiment of America and democracy is finding that balance. But the problem is, people want to forget what I just told you about the getting married very young, the culture supporting this, reinforcing that you can't cheat, because if you cheat, then the whole system falls apart, women keeping women in order, men keeping men in order, all of those things were in place back in the day, even up till very, very recent history. 
but then we talked i talked about before how ronald reagan came in and he was the one in california in 1969 who signed no fault divorce into law in california which then became adopted in every state of the union not too long after that and now we have the world we're living in now and so when i go into church and i hear people act like none of that has happened or at least it did happen but it doesn't matter if you do this. If you just do X, if you listen to Y, if you actively chase Z, then this won't matter to you. That's just actively untrue. And I don't understand why people say that. It doesn't work that way. You can't tell people in good faith that if they just do X, that they'll be immune to this circus show. They'll be immune to this garbage. It doesn't work that way. But I don't hear any church. Maybe there is a church out there that does this. I have yet to see them on the internet. I have yet to go to this church. I have yet to see articles written about this church. I have yet to hear this conversation being had by anybody besides me. That when you ask young, when you tell young men that they can either go the, the route of, I can do what I want to do, have power options and be masculine, or I can just basically provide for everybody but myself, be treated like a utility, and, you know, my wife could still divorce me, take half of my crap and my kids and bounce. I'm supposed to just be okay with that. In fact, not only am I supposed to be okay with that, I was supposed to consider it a privilege for me to be able to give up half my crap and my kids and risk my whole future on somebody else. And we don't live in that world anymore. Men have no reason to participate in this system. And the only way that they can still get is basically be brainwashed into it and be shamed into doing it. And I'm sick and tired of that. I need people to start giving me logical arguments for men to be in society. Because let me ask you something, gentlemen listening to the show. Do you, I don't talk about feelings very often, but we're going to have a feelings conversation. Because guess what? The feminists want to throw it in your face. The clergy want to throw it in your face. So we'll talk about it for two seconds. Men, do you feel like you people care about you in the society do you feel like the government cares about you women care about you that children care about you that the people in the media care about you probably not probably not because when you look at the society it's all geared towards a women because in the entire marketing industry is fixated on the female form or an extension thereof just look at how many the sex sells marketing campaigns that are all over the place. Oh yeah. Women want to complain about being objectified, but they know that that's the main source of their power. They just want to manipulate you into thinking that you're the problem for liking it when that's how God designed you, by the way. And they're more than happy to exploit that. That's like saying, oh, you know, is it the dealer's fault or is it the user's fault? You can get into that argument if you want. But that's why I say that people use God as a guilt trip because there's no logical explanation for why men should just get married, risk all their stuff, and to modern women. Because modern women have the perfect cherry picking situation. They can double dip the system, they can call you the problem, they can gaslight you, manipulate you, take half your crap and your kids, and statistically speaking, they're the ones that end relationships. But yet you're supposed to just, just roll the dice and hope you get a Yahtzee. And even if you take the smart approach and you go for a very safe relationship, as in you vet the person, uh, you try to go more down the route of mutual beneficial and less on love and more on the long term, even then you're liable to lose half your crap, your kids, child support, alimony, whatever. You're still liable for this crap. But guess what? People don't care, and the only women who care about this are the really rich ones who have experienced this, and they're like, oh my god, how is this possible? Well, you ever seen that meme where there's like dudes and they're like, haha, first time, huh? Yeah, yeah, because that's what tons of men are experiencing, and we talk about this all the time. Even me, as someone who hasn't been divorced, who was interested in getting married at some point, and now, oh hell no, mm -mm. no. I'm never going to do it, by the way. Until I see marriage laws change and I see actual equality, not this, this fake synthetic garbage. Let me tell you something. If we actually had equality in this country, it might actually be good. But the minute that women give up their privileges, the minute they advocate for actual change, 
that does uh, for the laws that were put in place to protect them from men when they had no rights when now they have more rights than men do and on top of that they still have the power of what's between their legs guess what well, you will never see true change in this country you will never see any change in the west because we are living in a very gynocentric society and a lot of you already know this and that's why you're moving differently. You act differently. You carry yourself in a way where you know if you make one wrong move, say one wrong thing, have one too many drinks, you could go to jail, you could have half your stuff taken, uh, you get married and your wife puts you in the doghouse or your wife stops giving sex to you even though that's literally her entire job. You then are stuck, you can't cheat, you can't go away, you can't, you're, you're stuck. You're caught in a catch 22 but yet they're the victim even though they're the one benefiting off everything. Make that make sense. This is why I'm telling you that the church is, if they wanted to actually help, they would be telling men about this and warning them and taking steps to prevent this from happening, but they are not. They're just saying that, oh, just listen to the Bible and everything will fix itself. See, that's called the hope strategy. When you hope that people do the right thing, Good luck with that, because uh, look where we're at right now. Look at the garbage that passes for a relationship marketplace today. Look at the rates for uh, STDs. Look at the fact that marriages are collapsing and the immigrants are having to be imported in here because the, the birth rate is abysmal in this country. Look, if you want me to sugarcoat it, you're, you're at the wrong place. I don't like sugar. It's bad for you. Good medicine tastes lousy. But it's very effective. And so that's that's why I give it to you straight. You don't like it? Then go find someone who, will, who has like a metrosexual voice and will talk like, Oh, hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to preach pie, love and peace and joy. And forget that garbage. Who cares about it? We need to talk about why men have become such patsies. And we need to discuss how we can act and adapt or we'll risk dying. That's what we need to do. How do we train the next generation to prevent them from succumbing to this this lie this false map that's given to every man at birth by his mother auntie father because he's probably blue pill as hell all these things how do we teach them to resist emotional pathos manipulation how do we do that because that's what's important my friends i guarantee you a lot of people are going to be offended by this and a lot of people will not like it. Good. I'm not here to make people happy. I'm here to tell you how it is and give you food for thought on how you can adapt and change your life. That's what I hope you do. My friends, in the meantime, if you want to let your voice be heard, whether you have a personal experience with this or you've seen other people go through with it or you're just concerned about it, let your voice be heard. The comments are open. Uh, my sheep get sheared page on x is open you can hit me up directly or you can comment on my posts you're welcome to do it my friends in the meantime take care of yourselves question everything do your own research because i don't make this up trust me i don't see why i would make this up when it's so easily verifiable you just google it my friends i'm out of here peace